Hello, everyone. I'm here with a wonderful friend, Kiva Williams. And, uh, man, I've known Kiva since, my goodness, yeah. since the warehouse days when we first planted Bethel about 22, almost 23 years ago. She's just a, She still looks as young now as she <laughs> did then. And Kiva has just an amazing story of, you know, a journey she's been on, and she's birthed this amazing ministry called Rhema Word Foundation. And it really focuses on the abused and the, the hurting that, you know, whenever they need shelter, whenever they need encouragement, resources, her ministry provides it. But you got to hear the backdrop. You got to hear the backstory of Kiva and just the journey she's been on. Because every time there's a, a ministry that's birthed, that's of God, it's not usually birthed out of fun and joy. Right. Right. You right. normally the thing that we had to overcome or that we had to live through becomes our ministry yes. because we have a heart for those like no one else yes. and revelation and insight like no one else. And I'll tell you your story, you know, we, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago and I just said, you got to come on. We got to, we got to <laughs> do a podcast. And I was just tearing up in the yeah. office when we were just sharing and just all the amazing things that God's brought you through. So Kiva, why don't you just introduce yourself, your ministry and Sure. <clears throat> yes, my name is Kiva Greenlee Williams. I'm the executive director of Rhema Word Foundation, and we provide resources and uh, support to women and children who are survivors of abuse. So um, that's just pretty much what our organization does. Um, but just to give you a little background history of how the Rhema Word Foundation came into existence, um, in 2004, I lost my little girl, Rhema. And I lost her to child abuse. Uh, she succumbed to that um, many years ago. However, it took me that long to be able and be comfortable enough to talk about and be transparent about what happened during that process. Um, of course, you know, when you're a mother and uh, a parent in general, you feel like that it's your job and position to protect your kids. So I walked many years in condemnation regarding that aspect. But um, nonetheless, in 2004, uh, she passed away from child abuse. Um, and I wandered in the wilderness for about 11 years, I tell you, Pastor. Uh, but um, at that time, I was a member here at Bethel Harvest. And I tell you, you and Stephanie both were such a blessing in my life at that time. I'm Man, I don't know how I would have got through it without you all's yeah. help. Um, but you pretty much birthed that concept of the Ramey's Refuge Crisis Center and the Raymond Word Foundation in my heart because uh, as my pastor and a pastor's heart, you uh, pretty much gave me a shelter for three months because my whole life was devastated. I, had, I was a business owner, and I had a business in Louisville, Kentucky. I closed that up. And I had, a, of course, filed bankruptcy on this. Now, this was a spiral I was yeah, going down. Come on, I, was, I yeah. was going down a spiral because I couldn't function because of the grief, the yeah. amount of grief I was under. And um, you, you know, when you, mm -hmm. and I want you to continue on, and I went through a time of depression. Oh, goodness, it's been eight, nine years. Well, it's probably 10 plus years ago, but it was about a three year period. And a lot of layers affected with ministry, betrayal, just a lot oh of gosh. stuff, economy crashing, my mom passed, just yeah. a lot of things. And we don't realize how much stress that we handle daily, yes. just in everyday life, Absolutely. right? Whether you're pastoring or a business owner, or a stay at home mom, it doesn't matter. There's stress in life, right? Yeah. When you want to do it with excellence, and even though you're doing it with God and for God, yeah. there's still stress. And then we don't realize the compound effect when you throw one more thing, one more thing, and then you can't make the payments because you can't get out of bed because you're trying to get your mind right oh, to gosh. even decide you're going to live or not, right? right After right. a tragedy like that. So I just want to encourage everyone out there yes. that just as you hear her story, it is amazing. And uh, I got to witness much of it. Just, just imagine maybe what you've been through and how God can use you to help others because your story is yeah. another way to mentor others and, and it's so powerful. But yeah, go on with that, how that was birthed. And well, um, <clears throat> and then, of course, I um, I went from job to job, bouncing from income to income. From a business owner now from a to business, a yes. job to job, yes. just trying to survive. Just trying to survive. A lot, of, a lot of people don't even know I was living out of my car. Mm -hmm. So I had... Uh, Obviously, I, I didn't know because no, you no. told me you were fine when yeah. you... I was like, well, I was, you know, because I was a little embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, um, you know, going from a business owner to living in your car. You just try to uphold an image. Mm -hmm. And I was more concerned about that image. And also, I wanted to make sure that, you know, I didn't grieve 
my family too much, you mm-hmm. know, because they mm-hmm. was a little worried about me. But um, yeah, so I had totes in my car. I was living out of my car and I was going from place to place. But I did res- um, appreciate the fact that Bethel Harvest um, put me in a hotel for three months mm-hmm. while I was getting back up on my feet. Not only did you do that and the church family, but they also, pro- you know, provided uh, benevolent as far as funding for uh, food and things like that. So I was so grateful for that. So that three months gave me just a stress-free three months. But mm-hmm. after that, you know, life goes on. Yes. Bills mm-hmm. go on. Mm-hmm. You know, people, they, you know, they concerned about you, but bills have to be paid mm-hmm. regardless. Mm-hmm. So um, throughout those years, I kept trying to find myself. You know, I was trying to make a relationship work that was not supposed to work. I kept trying to force this puzzle piece in a, in a place in my life that it just didn't fit. Mm-hmm. So finally, I just said, I hit 40 years old. So I went through all of my 30s from I lost Remy when I was 29 years old. And when I turned 40 is when I said enough is enough. And I grabbed a hold of my life. And I said, you know what? I just can't do this anymore. I have to take control of my health. And I lost 147 pounds. Wow, that's amazing. Um, that's so awesome. And then it seemed like as soon as I start loving Kiva again, that's when everything un- unfolded. Come on. That's so good. So I, you know, I started working out. I started taking be- better care of myself. I, uh, you know, of course, I, you know, found a really great, great place to work. I worked for a couple of physicians, and I love that workspace. And it, I tell you, everything just started transitioning in my life. Um, and then shortly after that, I'm reunited with Ramey's father Mm -hmm. and um, he was in a relationship prior to me and I was in what I would call it complicated Mm -hmm. (laughs) relationship Mm -hmm. but um, yeah so he you know things weren't working out with him and you know he just came and and in that Mm -hmm. what's so amazing about your story because I remember Kiva and her sister man they were in our choir rocking and just on fire for God and then it's just hard to believe you had to go through this pain but as we always say running through is important right yeah and to think about Ramey's dad, uh, here you guys had Ramey before this, yes. and then the abuse happened from another person, not him. Right, yeah. So it's remarkable how 11 years later or whatever it was that yeah. God brought you two back into this full mm-hmm. circle. Well, it didn't bring. You two were working on yourselves. Yeah, yeah. You know, getting yourselves healed, getting yeah. yourselves where you need to be. Mm-hmm. And, man, that should just bring hope. Yeah. Because so many times we'll look at a work associate, a friend, someone in church, and a tragedy happens yeah. and we're just like, man, how are they going to make it? Yeah. I mean, their life's over. Oh yeah. my God. I couldn't imagine. And you don't know till you're the one in the storm. That's right. But the beauty <laughs> of this story, it's like from ashes to beauty is you doing all those things to, to better yourself, to, to, to get what, what you need. And the whole time, what most people don't realize is when we do ministry, we can't give what we don't have. That's right. Yeah. Right. And right. and so I always say it like this as far as speaking, preaching, I call it. So I preach what I am. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what I am is what I preach. Yeah. So really, you can say whatever you want, but your communication reveals your heart, whether that's in a pulpit or in a business arena or or in school or in a ministry. And now you had so much to give to others. Yeah. Because another thing is we got to realize, too, and you know this you know, that the the ones that do the abuse have been abused. And yes. when we're self, and we can be those that maybe someone else hasn't tragically abused us, but we're self-punisher. Yeah. And I used to deal with that. Like I was, you know, you didn't have to be hard on me. Yeah. You know, I wanted excellence. I, I, I was the toughest person ever on Dalton. You know yeah. what I mean? And, but when I had to go through that, depre- that time of depression and God healed me of that, and you know me, I've laid hands on people, blind eyes open, yes. cancer goes, all that. And here I'm depressed and yeah. I can't figure it out. It just, ha- you know, it's slowly. And so no one's above pain. No yes. one's above a tragedy happening. No one's Absolutely. above depression or any of these things. And that's why your story is just so amazing to me. Just seeing the full circle, yeah. how when God does it, yeah. it can't be done any better. Can yes. It? That's right. And I now gave, you guys are together and you yeah, have a little boy. Absolutely. Wow. Yes. I gave God a sincere yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it took me 11 oh, years to do good. it, but mm-hmm. I gave him a sincere yes. I, and, you know, we get in a habit of walking our journey and then we just say, yes, Lord. Yes, mm-hmm. Lord. Just out of repetitiveness. But mm-hmm. when you give him a sincere yes mm-hmm. and he and you open your heart to whatever comes with that sincere yes, 
things unveil, things unfold, and then your life, you'll see your life coming back together where you can actually put those shower, shattered pieces together so good. and make a picture. Mm. And that's exactly what God done in my life. Um, he, uh, he brought the father of my child back and, um, he didn't at that time. We didn't. He didn't have any other kids. He has a, a teenage daughter, but he didn't have any other kids besides uh, Ramy, and I didn't have any more kids. I was waiting on my husband. You know, I was like, mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. you, you know, if my husband don't come, then so be it. But I was okay with that. And uh, he came back. He said, Kiva, you know, I just feel like that we're supposed to be together. Wow. And throughout those eleven years, we used to check up on each other just as friends. You know, he'll call me on Mother's Day, I'll call him on Father's Day, and we just kind of, kind of just yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, just check in on each other. Yeah, so that and, love was always there. Yeah, it was it's just there. All this other stuff. Yeah, in life, it was a know? lot. <clears throat> and of course, you know, uh, hurt people hurt people. Yeah, so yeah. it just wasn't the season for us to be together. Right. He was broken. I was broken. I was hurt, and I, you know, it would have mm. been a disaster. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so. Um, Needless to say, uh, when he came to me, he said, I believe we're supposed to be together. Six months later, he dropped down on his knee in front of my friends and family on New Year's Eve and proposed. Wow. And um, caught me off guard. And needless to say, uh, we were married 18 months later. Wow. Uh, he had came to me. He said, Kiva, do you want any more children? Now, at this time, I'm 41 years old. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, goodness, if I can have kids, yeah, that's fine. You know, I don't. I don't know, but yeah, I do. So we looked into, you know, trying to have a child, and uh, we got some really, really discouraging news back from the doctor. He said, nope, it's not going to happen. There's not enough there. Just, you know, don't put any money into it. It's just not going to happen. And um, so I was discouraged, and uh, to say the least, I called him up from work once I got that news from his nurse. Uh, I called my husband up. I said, you know, I just got some news. They said it's not going to happen. You know, it's not anything they can do. It's just nothing there to, for them to increase anything as far as fertility was. And um, he said, Kiva, I've seen us with a son. Wow. And he said, I know what I've seen. I've seen us with a son. Wow. And I said, okay, well, if you want to walk this thing out in faith, we'll walk it out in faith. Needless to say, after that, seven months later, I had gotten sick. I went to the doctor and I I had flu symptoms. Of course, they tested me for flu. Yeah. And I did have the flu. But, uh, and I told them some other things that was going on. And they said, well, let's, you know, let's test you in that area. So they tested me. And uh, lo and behold, they came around that corner and said, lady, you're pregnant. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> God is so good. So, is yes. So good. And now we have a three year old son. <laughs> he is beautiful. a junior. <laughs> um, I tell you what, God is so amazing. Wow. When I thought that, um, Nothing was going to reconcile in my life. I just, I just thought mm. it was over. Wow! And I, I was just accepting defeat and loss. Mm. But God said no. He turned that whole Man, that situation just, around. That's so beautiful, and I, that, that's why there's always hope, you know. Yeah. And it was an eleven year journey, yes. and God doesn't always move quickly, but He does move suddenly. Yeah. But most times, He's waiting on us to make a move. Yeah. You said when yeah. I gave my sincere yes, yes, things started happening. Yes. And that's so powerful. And it happened so quickly. I felt like I tell everybody. He redeems the time. Doesn't yeah, he? he does redeem the time. I tell you what, I felt like I was on a roller coaster, just holding on for dear life. Mm. I mean, I got engaged. A few months later, I got pregnant. A few months later, I mean, it was uh, we had a grand wedding. It was just so beautiful. Wow. Um, it was a fairy tale. It beautiful. was a fairy tale. I couldn't ask for a better husband. I yeah. promise. God knows exactly what he's doing. That's awesome. He knows That's exactly awesome. what he's doing, but I am grateful. And now that brings us into, I wanted to just share your story. It's so remarkable. And I want people to always understand because I believe in your ministry. Yes. And I've sewn into it and I'm going to sew yeah. more into it. Because it's such, it's such a needed ministry. It's the yeah. forgotten people, I yeah. think. You know, it the is. forgotten ones that are abused, they're too ashamed to share, yeah. they're hiding it, they don't want yeah. to break the family up. Just all these things. And it just breaks your heart when yeah. you see people just abused. It's yeah. just tragic. And you just have this amazing ministry that yeah. you birthed out of your ashes, yeah. out, of, out of your pain. Yeah. And man, who who would have more empathy than you, yeah. right? You've right. been through it and yeah. faith because, look, if I did it, anybody can yeah. do it. Absolutely. You can do it. So tell us a little bit about Rhema Word now. What's okay. going on with the foundation? Yeah, so Rhema Word <laughs> Foundation um, is in full bloom. Uh, we opened it in 2019, mm -hmm. um, right in the heart of when the pandemic hit. So mm -hmm. um, my husband's been wanting to do this for a while just to kind of build <clears throat> 
a rhema, a legacy. Mm -hmm. So I would give him an excuse as, after excuse. It's too, I'm just too busy. I can't do it. So mm -hmm. when the pandemic came, um, I didn't have anything but time. Right. So I just started building. I started putting it together. And uh, and that's one thing God has always blessed me to do is when I have a vision, he's always seen it through. So that's, that's awesome. another thing. Wherever that's I awesome. put my hands to, God for some reason blesses awesome. it. But I um, started building this foundation. And then out of the woodworks, people came to sow into the foundation. Um, we had, uh, right now, we have 19 directors. And wow. four nurses, um, three social workers, um, and we have people who walk all different, just local business owners who've sown in, in actually a part of the board. So, I mean, it is amazing what God is doing with this foundation, but we serve the community mm -hmm. with food. Um, if they need food, if they need clothes for maybe an interview, or if they start a new job and they need a, you know, a few get items back to on get, their feet. get back up on give their them, feet. Yeah. yeah. Give them some resources, something that they can hold on to. Maybe they need a gas card to get mm -hmm. back and forth to work, you yeah. know, because when you are devastated, which I was, I was devastated to the utmost. You don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to put your life together. So that's where Raymond Word Foundation comes in. We kind of lay out this roadmap for you to achieve each beacon and each goal so you can get to the next level. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget you said through is important. You said, and things come to your life for it. Things come so it can pass. Mm -hmm. So it came to pass. Yeah, that's so good. I, Ooh, never I like get that. that. I'm going to steal that. I'm no, gonna that's yours. That I started mine? from you. <laughs> oh, I love it. Because I, 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 yeah, you, you said that. And I know that um, a lot of tokens that you've put into my heart, I've, cherished them for years and it's helped me overcome but yeah you said things in situation come in your life so it can pass so that was one thing that i mapped out was like we need to give these people mm. a map to restore so their life good. so, so good. when they come to us we ask them general questions of what they need and we assist in that way whether if they just need something I, we have people who are very well put financially, economically, all of that, but they just need someone to talk to. Yeah. Because they went through such a devastation as a child. Mm -hmm. uh, something happened to them. Yeah, mom, that's where people things. forget. The yeah. hidden people are all around you. Yeah. You may be married to a hidden person. Yeah. And they may not even felt comfortable to share with you the abuse, yeah. right? Yeah. And but that pain and it's not dealt with. Yeah. It's just festering. It's, it's there. festering. And they'll <laughs> come to the office and I had several people to come to the office and they'll just sit there for hours and talk to I me love it. about <laughs> things that they went through. <clears throat> as a child so um we're just here in in, in any way we can help in um rainbow word foundation we're gearing up for a few things of course the holidays is coming up well you have but you also have a hotline don't you like yeah have we have a, a crisis 20, line yes we have a 24-hour crisis line uh which is on our website so mm -hmm. if you ever and we'll, we'll put the number up on the bottom of the screen okay. too for that too okay. so people can good deal yeah so yeah if um we're just here for the community. We're mm -hmm. here in any way we can help. So and now you're gearing up for holidays yes. and Christmas and all that. Yes, this is Christmas. my favorite time of the year. <clears throat> I love seeing the faces on on people um, who just come to get Thanksgiving baskets. So like this year, we're going to uh, serve the community with a hundred Thanksgiving baskets. That's awesome. um, and this year, we're gearing up for our Christmas program. So mm -hmm. we're going to try to at least do forty families with a full Christmas dinner and along with some oh, christmas that's, gifts so that's huge so that's, yeah that's huge. We're, we're trying our best to get to that but you know um i'm just i'm just a vessel <laughs> that's Amen. all i can say i tell everybody i'm just a vessel whatever it. god want to do he just do it you know he's just looking for somebody to work through that's it a lot of people say well how did you do this or that i said man it's just one step at a time and trusting it. god and then he always sometimes it feels like you're not moving and then he just like put you 20 steps ahead Yes, because yes. you were willing. Yes, right? yes. He's looking for people after his own heart. If you're after his heart, he'll find a way yeah. to, to get you into a place where he can use you in, yes. a, in a powerful way. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yes, we have uh, a few things coming up. We have the uh, Christmas, the uh, well, what is it called? The holiday, I, I gave it some fancy name, yeah. the Christmas concert for charity. Um, and that's going to host Mackenzie Thomas. And that's going to be here at Bethel Harvest. Yeah, I'm excited I'm about excited it. I'm excited about man. that. And she was on The Boys. She and was on The Boys. A Kentucky girl. Yeah, all she that. is. <laughs> and uh, we have some phenomenal people who's going to open up. We have the uh, Bluegrass Youth Ballet who's going to set the tone for the night. Wow, so awesome. they're going to open up with the Nutcracker. So they're going to come down the little owls and oh, twirling. And it's going to be beautiful. so nice. Uh, we have uh, Bishop 
Kenny Clay who's going to come and he's going to sing a few selections and then we have our own Pastor Marion Dalton is going to close us out oh, be all but right. it's going to be an awesome night it's going to be so fun and all proceeds go towards this Christmas event and our toy drive and, our and we're going to have that on the screen so make sure that if you don't have a ticket get a ticket and bring someone with you because yes. this young lady is she's amazing yes. right oh and then gosh. The cause is greater than the yeah. talent. Yes. Uh, you also, do you have a comedian? Or? Yes, we have um, LaRonda Clay. She goes by the stage name of Elsie Funny. Mm -hmm. And she's a Christian comedian. She's worked with phenomenal people. Mm -hmm. And she's so funny. So she's going to host the night. It's going to be an amazing it's night. It's going to be. I mean, the full game, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It is. And then not to mention, we're going to have a little Christmas village in the foyer. Mm -hmm. So you can do a little holiday shopping from oh, local that's businesses. Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, whether it's just buying a scarf or some candles or holiday candy. Um, we just going to set it up where you can do a little Christmas shopping out there, you know, and, uh, and that's just to feed back into the community as well because of all the tragic and devastation from the And this COVID. time of the yeah. year is the worst time for people because yeah. it's the time when you're battling depression or you're dealing with uh, pain or abuse, you feel isolated, you yeah. feel alone. And, and the, unfortunately, this is the highest time for suicide and stuff, yeah. and it's, it's heartbreaking. It is. It is. So our goal is to... Um, bring that number down. Mm -hmm. That number increased tragic, uh, drastically during the pandemic. COVID, yeah. yeah, we had to do funerals. Yeah. So it broke my heart several that I know is due to isolation. Yeah, you know? yeah. And um, I don't know um, if you remember 80, um, but she had passed away from complications of COVID. And um, Raymond Word Foundation took it upon them ourselves to provide their Christmas, not wow. only their Christmas holiday dinner, mm. but every single item on their wish list. Mm. So, you know, um, cause 80 still is a dear friend of mine. I, I still think of her as just a dear, a dear friend. Mm. And I met her here at Bethel Harvest. Yeah. Wow. And, um, so this year we just we're reaching back out to them. We got we got so many things on the agenda that we tell us there's something I'm really excited about. What you're really the, the biggie that you're believing for about yes. a home. Talk yes. about that for a few moments. So we are prayerfully uh, wanting to open a Ramey's Refuge Crisis Center. So this center is going to be more of a home. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to act as an emergency housing and transitional home for women and children who are survivors of abuse. Mm -hmm. um, so. This home will allow them shelter up to two years. So in that two years, it will give them a chance to maybe go back to school and we'll help them with that. You know, mm -hmm. if it, whether they need help filling out, you know, applications for college or Pell Grants and things like that will help them. But it gives them a chance to go back to school. It gives them a chance to maybe solidify uh, employment. Um, so this house is going to act as a refuge. And a safe place. It's a safe place. Where they can rest yes. and not be in terror yes. and all that. Yes, and it's going to be a safe place where they can get away from the predator. And um, also, we're going to have a tranquility garden in the back where they can sit out there and read a book or if they want mm. to uh, plant some flowers and things like that. Anything to help ease their mind from what they just went through. Because I'm telling you, I needed that refuge place when I was mm -hmm. going through. Mm -hmm. I needed a place like this to help you know, where somebody can just wrap their arms yeah. around me and say, we're going to guide you through this. It's a lot this. better than being in your car. Isn't yeah, it? it is. And most people don't have the fortitude that yeah. you have. And yeah. you did have a foundation of God. Yeah. So you knew, you know, yeah. there were certain things you could only go so far. Uh, and yeah. Now, won't you describe what you would see that house initially be? Well, I would see this house to be a, um, just a, a, a hope, a beacon of hope, a place of, Refuge. Tell me a little bit about, describe what it looks like and how many people it can accommodate and that sort of thing. Yeah. So when, somebody might be wanting to sew a house. Yeah. Business. You never know, yeah, yeah. you know, you never know. Uh, but yeah, so I'm looking and wanting and hoping for a five to six bedroom house where we can accommodate at least four to five families at a time. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to have um, all kinds of resources in there, such as clothing. Uh, we're going to do counseling. We're going to have it where um, you can come in and if you want to read or have a resource center, we're going to have those type of things. We're also going to have a common area where the women can come together and they can you know, pull off of each other because they, they're with people who are going through their own, you know, mm -hmm. the same thing mm -hmm. they went through. So they will have that common area where they can come together and kind of just, you know, uh, love on each other, you know, and, and inspire and encourage one another. Um, but yes, I want it to be a house where um, it builds hope, where these people will leave this house uh, 
want nothing but the best yeah. because I want this house to be nothing but the best. Mm -hmm. I want it and, and I want it to be And very, it could be yeah. almost like a house in one location, but a storefront to train and educate in another. Yes. You absolutely. know what I mean with the clothing and all that, but yes. then you have a house where it's just a refuge. Yes. Where it's a refuge. Yes. Where they can be discipled and loved. And yes. So <clears> that's <throat> what we're hoping for. We're hoping we can get this up and going by the uh, summer of 2022, mm -hmm. um, at least have a good, you know, foundation on it and a uh, grip on it. And uh, yeah, we just hoping for this thing to come to birth, um, come to pass. And it's the Ramey's Refuge Crisis Center. I believe it will. I mean, I'm excited about it. And uh, I just believe there's people even watching today yeah. that would say, hey, I can sow into that. Yeah. I can, you know, because when we talk about giving, and this is something I really emphasize here at Bethel, we do a lot of vision. You know, yeah. we go out into the community. We do a lot of things. But if all we ever talk about is what we do, give to what we do, give to what we do, that's about one third of it. Yes. The 70% of it, what God is interested in, or really the 80% of it is what kind of person is giving. Yes. yes. And I think so many times we look for opportunities to give and it, 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 it excites us, but what excites God is more about what it's doing to you when you give. Yes. And the power in it is when we give, yes. it begins to build us. It begins to uh, show us God in a greater way and yes. a greater height. And, 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 you know, when we give alms or, you know, you, you, we return our tithe, we give seed offerings, but when you give that alm, that, uh, Oh, what do you call the other offering? Um, uh, da, 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 I'll think about it in a minute. But it's just, it's a free will. Like, I'm not expecting to, a return. Uh, I'm i am not expecting, oh, I'm going to get 30, 60, 90 fold, yeah, nothing. Yeah. I am just giving this to honor God and let him do what he yeah. wants to these. I, I just believe people are going to be doing that. And and I just want to encourage you. I mean, yeah. I'll sow into this ministry and I'll be sowing more because I love seeing hurting people minister to. But yeah. God always has a man. God always has a woman. Yeah that he works that through. Yeah. He always works through a visionary. Yeah. And I'm so excited. I got to meet one of the ladies that works with you. I mean, because God's just put a really cool team around yeah. you and, and it's set. It's, you can <laughs> yeah. tell it's ready to launch. <laughs> yeah. So, so again, how can they, so we'll have on the screen about how they can contact yes, you, absolutely. Uh, the website and buy tickets. And again, absolutely. what day is the concert? December the 10th. On a Friday, on a which Friday. is a good time. Yes, to, absolutely. You can get off from work, come and just hang out with us. Uh, it's going to be uh, oozing Christmas. Mm. So, um, but yes, um, come out, support. Rhema Word Foundation, um, like I said, Mackenzie, her voice is an experience. If you mm, have never, yeah. ever heard her, you are in for a treat. I'm telling well, you. Well, they could probably just go on YouTube yeah, and pull you, up the voice oh, or gosh, whatever, yeah. right? She is, I mean, phenomenal. Um, but not only that, we just have local talent here in Lexington that's going to be here. And mm -hmm. you won't believe the talent that we have here locally in it's our amazing. city. It really is amazing. It is amazing. And um, I'm just grateful that... They have put their arms around me and, and grabbed hands with me and said, let's do this. You know, awesome. I'm grateful for you and Stephanie and um, the trust in that you are letting us and allowing us to use your beautiful facility for this event. And um, I'm just excited. I'm well, excited. We're excited for you. So, again, I just want to make sure, you know, that you connect with Kiva and we got a, a, a link down at the bottom that you can connect on. And uh, just get involved. Find out what's going on in this ministry because if you really, I, I, I like to sow into people I know and I believe in. I don't like to sow out some myth or whatever. You know, I like to sow into people I know and believe in, and I yeah. believe in her and I know yeah. her, and I believe that you're just just beginning to hear her name. You're going to hear it a lot more because God's done such a work in her. Thank you. And there's, yes. you know, there's we're never running out of hurting people, right? No. And as long as we love God and we serve him and serve hurting people, yes. we'll, we'll always have a ministry. That's right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Anything else? And we'll pray in a second, but anything else on, that you? Well, um, let's see here. So I think we, I just, I'm just excited about what's coming. Please, please, please get involved. Also, we're going to um, be one of the foundations in the Good Giving Challenge that's getting ready to start November 30th okay. through December the 6th. Okay. So uh, the Good Giving Challenge uh, is a is through the Bluegrass Foundation um, downtown Lexington. Mm -hmm. So they've 
got a lot of the local businesses. So whenever you sow into a nonprofit, if you choose our foundation, some of the local businesses will match it. Wow. So when if you cool. donate, they'll match it. So that's going to be November 30th through December now, 6th. Now, if they get a link to your page, can yes. they get connect with that? Yes. So the again, that same there. link will Direct get all the information. All so make sure you do that. That's yeah. just another, that just doubles your opportunity to bless. Yes, yes, yes. So that's another thing. So yeah, we are um, partners with Kroger's Rewards. We are partnered with uh, Amazon Smile. Uh, we partnered with... Um, some of the local churches here in Lexington. So yes, please, please, please um, support our mission, support Amen. our cause. So beautiful. Well, I just want to thank you, Kiva, for coming. And I'm so proud of you thank and what you. God's doing with you. And it's and, and it's just a small beginning compared yeah. to what God, it's not small, but to God it's small compared yes. to what he's going to do through you well, and with your team. So I want to pray for you and your team. And as we just sign off today, Father, I just thank you for Kiva and God, just this, this great foundation, Rhema Word Foundation, and the vision that's in her heart. She's already expressing it, but Lord, I just know you're getting ready to blow this thing open. And I just thank you for all of her directors and volunteers and supporters that you just continue to encourage and multiply them so that the vision can move faster. God, we just put our faith out there, especially during this giving season, that people give, that they sow into this because the hidden people, they, they don't have a voice. And, and Kiva is being that voice for them. And she's been there. She knows what it is. And she knows how to, to direct and to minister in their lives to get them back on their feet through the power of God, but also through works and through planning and administration. So, Lord, I just, uh, again, thank you for her. Thank you for Rama Foundation and just for what you're doing in our community yes. and what you'll continue to do through her and her ministry. And we just give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it's just always great to be with a difference maker, yes. and you are a difference maker. Thank you. So uh, make sure you share this. I believe a lot of people need to hear what, what was said today, and uh, we just want to, we're just looking forward to what God's going to do in your life during this season as well, because I believe you're a difference maker. So join us again soon. We look forward to hanging out with you and releasing faith to be a difference maker.